MMA Odds Breaker, I'm Frank Trigg. That's uh, Matt Bissett on the other side of the phone line this week. He's in Colorado. We had a hard time getting him on Skype video because of the delay that is so famous with Verizon in Denver. I've spent a little bit of time in Denver, and everyone makes fun of me because I keep AT&T, but for some reason it works better. So, <laughs> how are you, Matt? <laughs> uh, thank you very much for having me, man. Uh, yeah, again, sorry about the, uh, the not having Wi-Fi thing. Uh, hopefully this works out, too. No worries. It, it happens all the time. It's not a big. It's not a big deal. We could actually make it work because um, you're really not that handsome of a gentleman. So people not seeing you on that's, video is okay. That's that's a lie. You know, it's a lie. <laughs> it's a complete lie. It's a complete <laughs> lie. Well, let's talk about uh, uh, Daniel Weichel, uh, W like a V. Uh, you're battling against him March 28th, Bellator in West Valley City, Utah. Great night of fights on that card. Let's talk about Daniel first, though. Let's let's break him down as a competitor. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, well, first off, the, the guy's been around for a long, long time. Uh, he's an excellent fighter. He's an excellent competitor. He's had uh, forty professional fights, with, which is something. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if I can ever touch that kind of number. That's a, that's a ton of fights. And uh, mad respect to him for always always fighting. You know, good guys and uh, always stepping up. I mean, the guy fought at like uh, I think one seventy. Uh, 155 and 145. So he's been around the block. You know, not a lot of guys know him in America, but he's he's well respected all over Europe. He was the uh, M1 Global um, champion uh, at one point, and uh, you know he's 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 been around the block. He's fought the best guys, and uh, he's at where he's at because he proved himself time and time again. And I'm I'm ready to go in there and uh, you know beat the best guy again, just like I did with Diego. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, if you look at Matt's Matt's uh, record, we'll get to Diego here in a second. Um, Matt's got five KOs, twenty submissions, seven decisions, in his in his thirty two wins. He's on a four fight win streak, and the last time he fought in in uh, um, an M one Global is when he he uh, got heel hooked uh, by Musa. Since then, he's kind of been on a terror. Submission, 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 submission. He just he just bang guys out. He's 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 coming through it. So obviously, you're looking at these last four fights and going. He's going to play more of a submission game with me than trying to play a stand-up game. What do you think he's going to try to go back to where he was before uh, when he lost to, to uh, Musa, where he was basically trying to beat guys up with his, with his hands, and, with hands and feet? TKOs, decisions, KOs, that was the genre of, of fights he was having just before. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't try to figure out what the other guy's going to do so much as, you know, know what he's good at and, and train to prepare for it. Um, I think if you, he bases it on what's on – on the internet and uh, what he's seen me in in my most recent fight, he may want to uh, try to time some catching kicks and stuff because Diego was able to get me down twice just by uh, mm -hmm. catching kicks. Um, I'm not easy to take down at all uh, unless, you know, a, a kick is caught and my leg's way up in the air. That's kind of difficult to, to defend that takedown. But, um, you know, if Daniel tries to take to the ground because he, he thinks he can have me there, I have outstanding defense and offense and jujitsu. And that'd be a uh, ground battle that uh, Bellator would be, you know, blessed to have on, on Spike TV. So uh, whether it's standing or on the ground, if he wants to bang with me, I'll bang with him, um, test his chin. And I, I can't wait. I love fighting. I'm, I'm so pumped. And uh, Daniel loves fighting, too. It's, it's going to be a banger. It's going to be a really good fight, a lot of high action. And the thing I like about I like about uh, day on the ground. He does do a lot of work. He's not a typical sport jits guy that kind of holds on and slows the pace down. He works a lot, even from the bottom. So it's going to be a lot of action if, if this ever hits the ground. Whether you're on top or you're on bottom, there's always going to be a lot of action going on. That's what we like to see uh, as a fan. What I like to see specifically when I'm at home. Let's talk about your train camp right now, though. You're you're in Denver, Colorado. Who are you training with? Um, I'm training at Grudge with uh, Trevor Whitman. And what's the training camp been like? Did you have to bring anybody in special to get you ready for Daniel, or, or does Grudge have enough guys that you're just like, there's more than enough characters here to battle with? Yeah, Grudge has a lot of guys. Uh, all their pro guys are really talented. Their amateur guys are really talented. Uh, it's a huge facility. I'm, all, I'm getting a lot of them at work. Um, I'm, I'm not just here, just showing the classes. Uh, I, I'm getting a lot of extra attention from the coaches, which is, you know, mind-boggling. I didn't think any of that would happen, but... Um, Everybody's really nice out in Colorado. Really nice at Grudge, and uh, you know, like, I couldn't be happier right now. The uh, altitude was a little difficult at first, but uh, <clears throat> because I'm fighting in Salt Lake City, uh, where the altitude's real high, especially lower than it is here in Colorado, mm -hmm. um, I had to I had to come here. I had to get used to it, and uh, it's been it's been seven days now, and I think I'm I'm pretty sure I'm used to it now. So um, 
I mean, I, I didn't want to go into the fight in Utah and, you know, not be able to be myself, which is mm-hmm. high-paced, constantly attacking, constantly attacking. And, uh, you know, I will be able to do that. I'm pumped. There, uh, the first three days are always the worst. How was it trained the first three days when your body just has not acclimated yet to the altitude? And what did it feel like, actually, that the, one of the, the first 72 hours as you're working out? Um, it felt like it sucked, definitely. Um, it wasn't too bad, only because I had just fought, so I was in really good shape regardless. But um, every breath was like I had to breathe deeper, um, and it felt like the air was thicker. And uh, sleeping was a little difficult. It was, uh, I'd wake up really thirsty regardless of if I, yeah. if I was... Um, hydrated or not, and uh, I don't know, it's just, I didn't get sick or anything, which was really cool, I'm happy I didn't get sick, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a challenge at first, but I've, I've uh, got accustomed to the air, and uh, I'm ready for March 28th. For the folks at home, Matt's talking about he didn't get sick, a lot of people, a lot of athletes specifically, and that would happen to us quite a bit, as wrestlers, when we go to Colorado Springs to train, with the world team that got it prepared, we get sick the first four or five days because we have altitude sickness. It's like a flu type situation where your body just shuts down, you're rummed out, and you, you know you get fever, the chills, the whole bit. But you actually have it's altitude sickness from training too hard in the high altitude. So Matt skipped over that, which is good. Uh, is able to continue through. It takes about three four days to get to get lined in. Now, obviously, Matt, you, like you said, you're, you're you're into it, you're acclimated, and everything's back on track. Your timing's back in. You're able to hit as hard. You're able to, to sprawl as hard. You've got a great ground and pound. Everything is now starting to click again after you got through that first week of training. Yep, definitely, absolutely. Like I said, it was a little challenging, but uh, I'm back to where I'm supposed to be and uh, even better off now. Well, let's go back real quick to your last fight, Diego Nunes. You fought Bellator, uh, I think it was Bellator 110. Split decision, win for you, of course, but it was, it was a split decision. Do you think you could, have, you could have done anything differently to make the judges you know, give, give you the overall decision as opposed to getting a split? Um, I think I, I think I totally did enough in the second round. Um, the third round was a lot closer, um, though I was, I was sure I won the third round. Um, but if I, uh, if I maybe tried to come forward a little bit more in the third rather than counter punching, um, because I, if you're that, that third judge that scored Diego for the third round, mm-hmm. um, it was probably because they saw Diego attacking, but it, if you were the other two judges, they probably saw what was actually happening, which is Diego coming forward, and I was forcing him to miss, and I was countering everything he did. Um, so, you know, my my strikes were, were landing and his weren't. So um, I think the, the judges made the right call, giving me the third round, and, uh, you know, it, I'm happy the way it came out, but maybe I'd be a little bit more aggressive coming forward. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Matt Bissett on the other side of the phone line, getting ready to battle against Daniel Veitchel coming up here March 28th inside West Valley City, Utah, for Bellator. Uh, Matt, thanks for coming on here. Don't worry about the, the Skype video portion. We got it worked out. It's not a problem. Uh, just uh, um, it, it just happens sometimes, so it's okay. So don't stress over it. Thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Have a good rest of your train camp. It's going to be uh, fun, and I think I might actually be in uh, West Valley City for this fight. I'm trying to get up there and, uh, and uh, do some reporting from the sidelines, so hopefully I'll be able to watch you cage side. Sick, man. I actually get to meet you. <laughs> Incomparable, Frank Trey. Awesome, very cool, man. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Trust me. I'm a little short. <laughs> nerd, I'm a little short, nerdy guy that kind of walks around, and it's not very cool at all. I'm not very cool. <laughs> uh, I doubt it, man. You're cool, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. We'll talk yeah, to you soon, bud. No worries.